Hey Geometry, it's Mr. Lineski. Today we're going to be looking at 2D figures. Specifically, we're going to be looking at area, circumference, and perimeter. Um, so just a little bit of vocabulary before we get started. Um, anytime we're talking about the distance around a two-dimensional figure, that is going to be called uh, the figure's perimeter. Uh, and then anytime we're talking about the amount of space inside a 2D figure, uh, that is what we call the area. Uh, so again, area is kind of what fills the shape, perimeter is what goes along the outside. Um, so these problems down here are very kind of straightforward and basic, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. kind of want to just walk you through quickly uh, what we would do. Um, so on the SOL, you will get this formula sheet uh, that has all the formulas that you basically would need for 2D or 3D figures. Um, so you get that. Um, so a lot of this is just going to be using formulas uh, that are given to you. So for these problems here, we're finding area and perimeter of the shapes. Uh, so we, here we have a right triangle. Um, so for area, area is when we use the formula 1 half base times height. Um, the base and the height of our triangle are where the two sides meet at a right angle. Um, sometimes in a... Uh, we always have that if it's a right triangle, but if it's a non-right triangle, uh, sometimes we need to find that altitude to find the height. Uh, so here we could just say that the base is 12 and that 8 is the height and substitute those numbers in and solve. Just remember too that when you're solving for area, our units here are meters. So when we give our answer, it should be meters squared. Um, the answer for this when you find the area should be 48 meters squared. To find perimeter, perimeter is when you're just adding up all the sides along the outside. So we would say 8 plus 12 plus, uh-oh, we don't know this. Um, so because we don't know that third side, but we have a right triangle, we would use Pythagorean theorem um, and find that missing uh, third side. So when we find that missing third side, we end up getting that it's about 14.42. Uh, so then perimeter, we would just add those sides together. So we would say 8 plus 12 plus 14.42. Um, so you should get a perimeter of about 34.42. Um, when you give uh, units as perimeter, it's meters. So it just stays uh, meters. Uh, the figure here is a rectangle. So what you need to remember in a rectangle is that opposite sides are congruent. So if this is 6, this is 6. If this is 3.5, this is 3.5. Uh, so again, for perimeter, perimeter, we're just going to add up all the sides here. So when we add all four sides together, that's going to give us an answer. The perimeter is going to equal 19 centimeters. Um, area, the formula for area of a rectangle is length times width. So all we're doing here is just three, or I'm sorry, six times 3.5, uh, giving us an answer of 21 centimeters squared. So remember, area, unit squared, perimeter are just plain units. Um, circles are a bit different. Um, we don't use the word perimeter for a circle. Instead, we just kind of use the word circumference. Um, so circumference formula, uh, again, these are formulas you get on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize them. Um, so circumference kind of depends on what you're given. If you're given a radius, you'll use the formula 2 pi r. If you're given a diameter, you can just use the formula pi d. Because if you remember, 2 times a radius is equal to a diameter. Um, for area of a circle, area of a circle is um, pi r squared. So there's no d for that one. So r squared is not equivalent to the diameter. Um, so for this problem here, find the circumference round to, hundred, uh, to the hundredths place. Um, so here, when the line is drawn through the circle like this, a lot of students are confused. Is that 24 a radius or a diameter? Uh, the trick or rule of thumb is that if it goes the whole way through the circle, then it's a diameter. So this is a diameter, so I'm going to use this. Um, so substitute the 24 in for D. Uh, and we can actually leave our answer like this if we want. This is called um, in terms of pi. So if the directions ever tell you leave your answer in terms of pi, this is what it will look like. That just means you don't actually multiply the pi out. It just kind of stays as pi. Um, anytime we are using pi, though, where we're rounding the decimal, uh, the SOL instructs us to use 3.14. So this we're just going to multiply 24 times 3.14 we're going to get 75.36 inches. 
again, circumference is like a perimeter, so our units just stay inches. Um, for area, we're going to use the area formula. It says uh, find the diameter of the circle uh, if the given area is 144 pi centimeters squared. So this problem's a little bit more complicated. I'm not giving you a radius. I'm actually giving you the area, the given area. So area equals pi r squared. So I know that 144 pi is the area equals pi r squared. So here we can divide both sides by pi. The pi's are going to cancel each other out. So now I'm left with r squared equals 144. Square root both sides to figure out that r is equal to 12. The problem is asking what's the diameter. So remember, 2 times the radius is equal to a diameter. So 12 times 2 equals 24. So because we're just talking about a diameter here, um, we leave it as just units. So the diameter would be uh, 24 centimeters. Um, so now, what if instead of talking about the whole circle, we want to just talk about a piece of the circle? Um, and so this is called either arc length or arc sector, or I'm sorry, area of a sector. Um, so arc length is basically when I'm just saying, hey, circumference is what's this whole uh, length around the circle? Like imagine you took a piece of string and just kind of wrapped it around the circle. How long would the string be? Arc length is when you're just focused on like one little piece of the circle, not the whole thing. So all we're really going to do for this in terms of our formula, now one thing I want to point out is that these formulas are not on the formula sheet. Um, the arc length is when you basically just take the circumference, 2 pi r, and then you just multiply it by whatever your central angle is, divided by 360 degrees because the whole circle is 360 degrees and we're kind of just saying I don't want the whole circle I just want this little part of it and it always kind of stems off of a central angle um, so for this particular problem finding the arc length of a B looking at this problem well what do we know we know that the radius is equal to 8 so we're gonna say 2 times pi times 8 times and then our central angle here is 60 and then divided by 360 and now the nice thing about our calculators is that we can just kind of type all of that in at once uh, and that will give us our answer uh, because we're talking about arc length arc length is like a circumference so when we give our units for that our units should still just be plain units nothing squared um, so for this particular problem, when we end up multiplying all that together, uh, we end up getting that the arc length is equal to 8.37 feet. So area of a sector, same kind of concept. We're taking the area of a circle formula, pi r squared, and we're not saying I want the area of the whole circle. We're saying I want an area of a piece of a circle. And so that piece, again, stems from the central angle divided by 360. So same concept of central angle divided by 360. And we're just using the area formula. Um, so here, we know our radius is 8. Our central angle here is 70. Um, and so we can say pi times 8 squared times 70 over 360. So don't forget your order of operations. A lot of students like to do 8 times pi and then square it. It's actually just 8 squared. Um, so make sure you do that first, order of operations. Um, so we would do the 8 squared first and then say pi times 64 times 70 over 360. And then from there you can just do the calculator and type all that in at once. Uh, and then we would get the area of that sector is equal to about 39.08 meters squared. So again, because we're talking about an area, the shaded region here, uh, our units are going to be meters squared or units squared. Okay, so looking uh, lastly here at um, some just kind of weirder 2D um, figures. Um, we're going to talk about area and perimeter of some of these. Uh, so this one is find the perimeter of the figure below. So remember, perimeter is when we are just adding up along the outside. So 10 plus 15 plus uh, plus 4 plus 6 plus uh. 
So we don't know what these things are. So I can just put a little question mark there. So the idea is, well, we need to figure out what those sides are. If you take a look at this, this actually is kind of like a big rectangle with sort of a piece of it cut out. And so what you kind of need to visualize is what if I drew a line across here and now it's sort of two rectangles uh, stacked on top of each other. Um, and so for this, if you kind of ignore this bottom part, if this is a rectangle up here, if this is six meters, then from here to here has to also be six meters. Um, and so the same kind of thing goes here, that this whole bottom part is 15. Um, and so if I kind of draw a rectangle here and extend that out, well, this whole thing should be 15, but I cut off a piece. How much do I cut off? I cut off four. So 15 minus four gives me that this up here has to be 11. Um, and then down here, uh, same concept, that if this whole thing here was 10, and I know that this piece is 6, that means that this piece down here has to be 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. And so if I carry that over, this should be 4 as well. Because in a rectangle, opposite um, sides have to be congruent. So now, here's kind of the weird part. Don't add, include this. So now, now we go through and add. So when we add these together, this would be 10 plus 15 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 11. And we add all that together, uh, and then we would get that the perimeter is equal to 50 meters. Um, for this particular problem, uh, it didn't really transfer over. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Um, but we do need to draw in sort of a height here. Um, and so this one wants us to find the perimeter and the area of this figure. Um, this is actually five. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but that says five feet. Um, so for perimeter, we actually have everything. Five plus three plus seven. So include this as one big side. So five plus three plus seven plus five plus four. Um, so that should give you a perimeter of 24 feet. Again, just adding all the sides together. Um, for the area, though, the area, so this figure is a trapezoid. Um, and so on the formula sheet, you get area equals uh, one-half times the height times base one plus base two. Um, so the idea is that we need to figure out what is the perpendicular height of this um, trapezoid. So to figure this out, if you take a look, we kind of have a right triangle here with side three, a hypotenuse of five. I'm just gonna kind of exaggerate it a bit here. So this is the height that we're trying to solve for. This is three, this is five. And so we would do Pythagorean theorem. So five squared equals h squared plus three squared. When you solve for that, you get h is equal to four. Um, so I know that the height of this thing is equal to four. And then base one and base two are basically what are the lengths of the parallel sides. Um, so the parallel sides are considered the bases. So base one we can say is four. And then base two is this whole bottom. So that whole bottom would be 10. Three plus seven is 10. Um, and now again, order of operations, make sure you add here first. So it's one half times four times 14, um, and when we multiply all of that together, we should get an answer of 28 feet squared. All right, so that is it for this video with the basic uh, in information for area and perimeter. If you would like to see more on composite figures, feel free to watch the next video. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.